Wayne Ellen Sally, <coughs> reading from Beneath the Empire of the Birds. This is part four. Oh, Carl Watson, for anybody tuning in late. They say two forces rule but being. Gravity makes things fall, grace makes them rise. Combined, they are a ballast to the soul, as well as the very source of confusion. Thus, beneath the empire of the birds lies the empire of the mad, a kingdom for those torn in two directions, falling toward the heights, swimming in the gutters while walking in the air. Up where these worlds meet, up where, me up where men hang from the ironwork, getting their livers pecked out by harpies of alcoholic denial and suppressed hatred. Up where the ravens, swans, and peacocks perched next to the vases and minarets hallucinated high on the cornices, their parapets and cliffs above the city. Here, even the terracotta owls seem to cry a raw song. It's a vagrant's Eden. For indeed, they say Eden stands for judgment up here on the, upon these rooftops, as Eden always was above the world, up where the birds of stone and those of blood commingle, their grizzled cold throat feathers ruffled in the wind and rain as they claim the crumbling brick and mortar, the tar paper, and bleached bones of their dominion. But what is it at one moment? What I'm sorry, but what is at one moment homeless and free, uncomfortable and ecstatic, can in the wink of the mind become pure torture? For its worth, I'm sorry, for it's true, these mating songs sometimes sound more like the scrape of mason trowels, the drunken reeling trowels of jealousy or vengeance, sealing the still living bodies of an unwitting audience into the dungeon walls. Thus it is a prison built from the vagaries of song, a prison without walls, a prison of the fairy air, because that which Bo Bowie's also contains. Because sometimes the air is just so thick here, you have to push it out of the way even to move. But there is no place for the air to go. You wake in the morning to the wrinkling harsh voices of the blue-black ravens and the crows. The horror down the hall and the rustle of traffic at the window. You might hear a scream in the street. It may at first appear to be a human, but a hundred times louder and more terrifying than any human voice. Then you realize it's actually a machine. You might hear the flutter of wings when you blink your eyes. You wonder what it is that amplifies the sound. Maybe it's simply the ever-present irritation. It's the tropical discomfort of summer in Uptown, but you could really be anywhere, anywhere that's hot and supercharged with life. You might think you're in hell, maybe heaven. It's good to feel at home somewhere, though, you say to yourself. Even though you have no home, not really. Nothing but the air or the absence of containment is perpetual change. That's the end of part four.